Hello and welcome to the 2023 NCAA Division III Field Hockey Selection Show. I'm your host, Will Haskin. The beginning of another college sports year has finally reached its postseason. We can't wait to unveil the 26 teams whose seasons continue in pursuit of a national title. Middlebury has won the last five in a row, and while they hope to continue that streak here in 2023, this may be the deepest bracket in this sport's history. To be here, you have to earn it, and with 18 of the 26 spots in the bracket earned via conference automatic qualifiers, that leaves just eight precious at-large spots for deserving teams looking to win it all. Six teams have also been awarded first-round buys, with 20 teams starting first-round play this coming Wednesday. Second and third round matchups follow this coming weekend, with only four teams remaining after that. The national semifinals and championship take place on November 17th and 19th in Newport News, Virginia. Who makes it there depends largely on the draw. So let's set the path for our next champion right now. We dive into the bracket. We start at the top, and the first of our six buys to unveil, that belongs to Christopher Newport. A third straight tournament appearance is a first in a decade, with this team having the best title hopes perhaps in program history. And what a year to be peaking at the right time. The championship semifinals and final hosted by the captains. Five different players ranked in the top 10 in conference in scoring for a top five offense nationally. They await the winner of our first first round matchup. It's hosted by Keene. Something about odd years with this program, making its fourth tournament appearance to go along with spots in 2017, 19, and 21. Peyton Mann led the NJAC in points this year and is a key to this team's postseason success. Their opponent will be St. Mary's, the Atlantic East champions, still celebrating Brianna Allen's third period goal in yesterday's conference championship triumph. It was the first title in program history and earns a first NCAA trip as well. Congratulations to the Seahawks. Lynchburg is another host in the first round. Enza Steele, legendary field hockey coach for Lynchburg, is in her 45th and final year as the head coach. She's going to retire coming up in December. Just captured her 22nd conference title as the team captured the ODAC title in a season where Steele has now won over 650 games in that amazing career, the ultimate mark in conference history. And the coach will try to add another win against Keystone in the opener, just the second appearance in the NCAA tournament for the United East champions. Maria Tornada leads the team with a goal per game, also topping the conference this year. York, another host as well, made its tournament debut last year, got a first round win, hungry for more here in 2023. The Mac Commonwealth's top defense going to try to limit the offense of every opponent here in the NCAA tournament. 0.55 goals against was top five in the entire country. Bell Fields is the final line of defense in goal, also top five in the nation in goals allowed. And she looks to stop Denison in the opener. Freshman Emma Gebhardt played hero in overtime of the North Coast Athletic Conference Championship, chipping home the lone goal to earn a trip back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2019. It came against Ohio Wesleyan, which entered undefeated and hadn't allowed a goal in 14 straight games. That was a well-earned win. All right, our next buy to unveil belongs to Johns Hopkins. The Blue Jays made the title game last year for a second straight season, but couldn't solve the riddle that is Middlebury. Goalie Alexis Loader earned all tournament recognition. She's back in the pads this season, leading the Centennial Conference in goals against while ranking top three in the nation. And when they need a score, watch out for everybody. Hopkins averages over three goals per game without having a single player averaging more than half a goal per game this season. They've had 13 different players score a goal this year. Endicott hosts the matchup to head to Hopkins, champions of the Commonwealth Coast Conference for a sixth time, took a thrilling 2-1 to -one win over Roger Williams in the championship. The goals got very early goals from Tori Swanson and Maddie Dengler to build the lead, but that would be all. The defense held their opponent to over three goals, less than the season average, to secure the championship and a berth in the tournament. Ithaca will come to town. Congrats to the 1982 national champions for making it back to the tournament, earning the program's first NCAA berth since back in 2000. Williams stays home for the first round, back-to-back -back trips for the first time since 2006, and they'll do battle with Worcester, making their tournament debut in 2019, punching a ticket back to the dance with a win in the inaugural Mascac Championship, where the Lancers prevailed 2-0 to earn the title. And the winner of that one earns a date with Salisbury. It wouldn't be a bracket without the Seagulls, who push a record up to 38 tournament appearances now in program history. 
five national championships span various generations, but it has been 14 years since the last national title. To end the drought, defense will be the key. Salisbury led the C2C in shutouts and saves. Addie O'Connell in goal, ranked top 10 in the nation in save percentage and goals against. All right, another buy off the board with Babson. The best team all season in the new Mac earns a berth in this tournament for a third straight season, which is a first in program history. Third round exit in a tight game with Johns Hopkins last year set the tone for an experienced group to return stronger this year. The Beavers then broke the program record for goals in the season. They flew past the old mark of 100 in this past weekend's new Mac tournament. Sedata Walsh leads the offense this season, one of several graduate students on a very experienced roster. Bates will play host to an opener in the first round. The Bobcats have finally broken through in the tournament for the first time in program history, fresh off the heels of setting a new program mark for wins in the NESCAC. Much of the success has been thanks to the Cody sisters. Senior Page is the program's all-time leader in assists, while younger sister Anna leads the way in goals this season. And she will try and break through in the opener as Bates will deal with JW Providence. The GNAC champions sport the second stingiest defense in the country, surrendering under a quarter of a goal per game. Sophia Brea was the top goalkeeper in the conference and part of a brick wall on the back end. More Northeast action with Tufts as a host. The 2012 champions, the Jumbos, made the championship game four times in a decade. Always a perennial threat to make it back to the top. And they open against Southern Maine. We say congratulations to the Huskies. They got a game-winning goal from Hannah Banks to win the Little East Championship. It was the first time Southern Maine had won that championship in 20 years to get it done. That punches the ticket for the Huskies back to and now in the NCAA tournament, what a thrilling way to get it done and earn the program's berth. Championship pedigree on the next line. It belongs to Rowan, a 23rd trip to the tournament for the 2002 national champions. The NJAC champs for the third straight year feature some all-star players. Julia Caviccio was the NJAC defensive player of the year, while teammate Vanessa Di Donato handled all the scoring. Di Donato led the conference in scoring, including a five-goal explosion in the conference semifinals. That tied a school record. Hartwick will try to win on the road. The Empire Eight champions make back-to-back -back tournaments for the first time since the late 1990s. That was the golden era of the program, including a national runner-up in 1996, as this team tries to reach the same heights in a new generation. All right, our second unbeaten team in the bracket. Here come the champs. Time to say hello to Middlebury. The champs showing no sign of giving up the title as the Panthers seek championship number eight and seven in a row this year, fresh off another NESCAC title. In the one nothing thrilling final last year, Amy Griffin played hero, scoring with less than three minutes remaining. The 2022 tournament MVP back this year, pairing with the NESCAC's top goal scorer, Katie George, to be one and two in the conference in goals, sporting the second highest scoring rate in the country. There is no doubt that to be the best, you must beat the best. Will anybody topple the Panthers? That is the question here in 2023. William Smith would love a crack at the champs in a clash of the Titans. Three national championships for this storied program, which is back in the field for the first time since 2015. The champions of the Liberty League earn the program's 23rd NCAA tournament berth overall. And they will host Susquehanna. The landmark champions earn the automatic qualifier and a return trip to the tournament for the first time since 2018. It took a penalty shootout in an epic championship showdown. Goalie Ashley Derrick registering eight saves in the game and the most important one on the last penalty to clinch the title. Cortland hosts our final first round game. This will be Cortland's third straight tournament appearance and 31st overall. Head coach Tiffany Hubbard picked up her 100th career win at Cortland earlier this season. It was a 1-0 win over New Paltz to get to that precious mark. The Red Dragons outscored their Suniac opponents this year 27-1 while posting a 6-0 regular season conference record. Junior, junior Kiera Eteri became the 14th player in program history to reach 100 career points and has moved into sixth place all-time in points and goals. Emma Morgan in goal led the Suniac in goals against this season. A combined 34 wins in this first round matchup as they've placed Stevens in the opener. Liz Wurzbicki led the nation in save percentage this season to help bring her team back to the tournament for the second time in three seasons and return to the tournament fresh off another MAC Freedom Championship.
All right, that leaves one more spot to unveil. The winner traveling to our final team, a bye for Messiah. The 2016 national champions still have the distinction of being the last team to win it all before this run of dominance by Middlebury. This year, the Falcons once again paced the Mac Commonwealth in scoring. Kerry Bear and Aubrey Clark leading the way in terms of goal scoring. Celebrating the program's 36th tournament berth, the Falcons ranking third all-time in terms of appearances. A staggering 16 times this team has finished in the top three of this tournament. And there you have it. All of the 26 schools will participate in the 2023 Division III Field Hockey Championship. For those with first-round games, the time is now. Wednesday is looming for all of those matchups. Eventually, we arrive at the national semifinals on November 17th and the national championship on November 19th. You can catch all of that action right here on NCA.com from Jennings Family Stadium, hosted by Christopher Newport. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Will Haskett. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of bringing it out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at ncaa.com tickets. Class dismissed.